Hello and welcome along to Mondo Channel Vet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be about 10 movies that I can't believe got released fully on cuts in the UK. So in the mid 80s I received my first ever video cassette recorder and in them days you usually rented video cassette recorders, you didn't actually own them. In fact a lot of people didn't own their own video re recorders because they were that expensive. So of course then the, the floodgates were open for all those movies that you wanted to see, especially horror movies because I was a big fan of them. So what happened in 1984? The video Nasties happened. Uh, these videos would be ones that I would love to have watched uh, or owned and they were out of reach. And to be honest, from most of the, the 80s, from when I got my video cassette recorder to maybe the early 2000s, these videos or these films were really hard to get in any way, shape or form uncut. Now a lot has happened since then. It's been a it's been a complete change in direction. And there's not that many films these days that does get uh, cut in the UK. Most of the films you see do get a, a version of a release, uh, most of them. And to be honest, there's only a few that I think would never ever see the, to be fully uncut. Uh, the likes of I spit in your grave. I think that this is always going to be cut in the UK because the uh, yes, the scene, the sort of scene that's in here, that's the the uh, scene that got this into so much trouble. This twenty minute scene, it doesn't need to be that long. I think it's way over that that length. And this is the fully uncut version. But what I do is when I watch this one, I don't watch this very often. But when I do watch it, I fast forward that scene anyway. I think I've seen it once. I don't need to see it again. So I don't think that this one will ever come out. Also another movie that was one of the hardest ones to get on the video nasties list was The Beast in Heat. Now I think this movie is hilarious. Uh, it is really um, bad uh, in both ways. It's bad as a movie and it's also bad in its content. You'll not believe some of the things that happens in here. But it's more for the fact I like it because it's so preposterously stupid and laughable. The whole act in the storyline in here is just um, next level um, ridiculousness, if that's a word. So yeah, like the likes of these might never see a full uncut release in the UK. And you think, well, that's fair enough for the content. They still have a problem with certain scenes in uh, these movies. But to be honest, there's a lot of these movies here that do have scenes in it that you think, I can't believe that these things were uncut. Because usually when these movies came out, I remember th not so much these days but when they originally come out in the early 2000s like mid 2010s you would think what that film's coming out and it's fully uncut when you know that it's been one of the ones that the um the censor the censors really hated or didn't like any to have into this country and there was a big sometimes there was a big problem with these movies when they were uh, released and they were talked about coming over here maybe even the directors want to get prosecuted if they had this movie uh, even shown in the UK. So that's a bit of a backstory as to why some of these movies here are a bit astounding to me coming from that, that age in the 80s when you just thought you knew these films existed to a certain extent but you knew you probably never had a chance of seeing them and you definitely had a chance of never seeing them fully uncut and here they all are fully uncut and some of the movies in here they're not to everyone's taste and uh, I do appreciate these movies some of them I like some of them I appreciate for what they are uh, and some of them are just really actually brilliant movies okay so first up I have the last house on the left now this was one of the ones when you went to the video shop and you saw this in, on the top shelf in the horror section you thought yourself right I'm, I'll have to see that of course it gets taken out uh, I never got a chance to see this on video and then lo and behold it gets released years later fully uncut now i know that this i knew what this movie was about and i knew what was in it and i honestly thought that they would have cut certain scenes in this or trimmed it because there's a lot of things in this that uh, the censors don't like and the fact that they did release this and it's actually got some other versions on here which were unseen up to this point i think there's another version on here called krug and company and the, this movie to be fully uncut at that particular time was was unreal to see this thing so i went and got it i went and watched it and uh, i do like this movie i don't like it for what the content's about i do think the content in here is very graphic but i do like the movie because of the gang i think they are despicable and i think they're really done really well so if you want to see a movie with a despicable gang in here uh, this is the movie for you if if that's a thing 
But I did, I do like this movie, but I, can, I was really stunned when I heard that this was going to be a fully uncut and even have stuff that wasn't even seen in the fully uncut version in this package. Arrow have done a, a great version of this on a, on a really special edition as well. Some of these Arrow editions, when they have these big special editions of these movies, you think, wow, I didn't even imagine this would come out as a bootleg, never mind uh, in this spectacular form. So that's the last house on the left. Next up is 88 Films, Nightmares of the Damaged Brain. Now this is released fully uncut. Now it was released fully uncut in the States, which these things happen, and I did have the code red version. But to see this actually coming over here, and I thought this one was got to be cut because of some of the scenes in it. They're that explicit, I thought, there's no way that's gonna um, see the light of day over here. And of course it came out here, fully uncut. Now I don't know if it's particularly easy to get now, because I think it's a bit, uh, might be a bit out of print, but the fact this is another stunning release that you think and surely this has to be cut and um, like I say back in the day these films would never ever you wouldn't dream of this thing turning up and if it did turn up it would be heavily cut uh, so it's like I say these these films are, are so amazing to me that uh, they're actually fully uncut so that's nightmares in the damaged brain this is another movie that was on the video nasty list and uh, it's not everyone's favorite movie but I really do like this movie um, I like it for the same reason that I like Last House on the Left because the two people in here are really despicable. This um, couple, they uh, go into this, this uh, island and they just wreak havoc in this Greek island. And some of the things in here, I think there's a fair bit of animal cruelty in here as well. Although I don't, I think it was meant to be not real, but it certainly does look real. And some of the things that these, this couple do, it's like they've got no holds barred. They've got no, like, um, they don't stop at anything that they want to do. And I do rate this movie quite highly as a movie, but I was really surprised to see this one, knowing full well what was in it, for it to be released uh, fully uncut. I was thinking there's no way they're going to let this these certain bits come through, but here it is, fully uncut. It's not a bad picture, actually, and um, it's one of the ones that when the... If you try to search for the video nasties and get some from America, this was one of the ones that was a really hard one to get. Same with Nightmares and a Damaged Brain. That's Island of Death. Next up is a recent film. Now, I remember hearing about this movie being shown at Cannes Film Festival and people were actually thrown up or walking out of the cinema in disgust at the movie. So that kind of got my attention going. And it's also directed by Lars von Trier, who I quite like. I do like some of his movies and I don't like some of his other movies. He's a very divisive uh, film director and that movie is The House That Jack Built. Now this has got some really really brutal scenes in it and it's really amazing to think that this because you knew I knew what was in it and I knew that I thought that's another one where you thought well it's a new film but I do think that with what the the actual um, graphic stuff is in here there's no way that's going to ever pass the uh, senses but here it is fully uncut in fact it's uh by the s the full uncensored version the reason why i wanted to see this movie was because it stars bruno gantz who's one of my favorite actors of all time he appeared in a couple of movies that i like american friend uh wings of desire and also he's in downfall and the, he plays hitler and this hitler has been redubbed that many times um to, to about uh, football results and all that type of thing and everyone's seen them but this movie, yes, I honestly couldn't believe that this was going to get past and cut. It just shows you what they will let into this country now. I'm not saying they should let every single thing coming in here, but I don't agree on uh, movies getting cut as well. I think if a movie can't be shown here or can't be shown fully uncut, they should just not release it in the UK and then you can get it from a different country. So yes, that's the house that Jack built. Next up is a film that had a lot of problems. And I remember that this movie was talked about a lot before it ever came out. And I do think this movie is a, is a masterpiece. And the funny thing is, when this movie was uh, fell foul of the senses, it fell foul because of more of what was on the cover of it than it was of the actual movie. Although the movie is brutal. Um, and it's a comedy as well. It's a comedy about a serial killer who just thinks nothing about killing people and then someone's filming it. It's, it's a very strange movie, but really funny as well, if you like that sort of thing. And the reason why the cover was um, like banned and the cover does feature on the, the DVD of it. I don't think there's a Blu-ray of this uh, this movie at all. And this movie is Man Bites Dog. Now, as you can see, the main protagonist here is firing a bullet into something. And there's a dummy flying up with a blood spatter. Now, that caused an outburst back in 92, I think, when this movie came out. And to have it released with this cover as well, 
is a little bit wow they've released that and then they've released it fully uncut because there is some really um, brutal scenes in here but you've got to remember that this is very much a tongue-in-cheek comedy there's no way that this this postman i think he is just goes around with his camera crew to just show you how this is how i kill this person this is how i'm going to kill this person and he's kind of having off uh, sort of like offhand chats with someone as he's strangling someone he's going oh just hang on a minute i've just got to finish strangling this person before i continue it's a really bizarre film but it's highly recommended uh, and i do wish they would get a blu-ray out of this movie that's man bites dog next up was a movie that uh, i did have on american import uh, videotape and i thought it was one of the better in fact it's the only one that i would even watch of these sort of shockumentaries these real life murder movies and you can see this isn't one of the uh, sort of mondo movies that uh, where people get killed like traces of death faces of death death scenes these those ones were very much you watched them and you're like wow i can't believe that and you don't really want to watch them twice at all or at least own them and this one here is one that i do think as a documentary works really well and also as well as it being fully uncut there is a longer cut a japanese market version of it which has scenes in which is even more brutal than the actual cut that's that's the one that i know about i haven't watched the un uncensored japanese version yet the footage is actually from like news items and it's got like the the real life shootings of like kennedy and uh, robert kennedy and it goes like you know when they have a um a, someone who's like an active shooter so the movie is the killing of america now when this movie came out i thought there's no way this is going to be as, as again i thought this is no way it's going to be uncut because of what i've seen this movie and i know that this is some of the things that the uh, british uk censors just don't like uh like i say it's got real life murder this is all from uh, news footage so it's not as if there's people killing people on it although they are but it's uh things that have been caught on camera by sort of news teams and things like that like sort of um standoffs and all that type of thing uh, there's also mortuary um uh, autopsy footage as well uh, I do know that um, the, all the scenes, especially like the, the autopsy stuff, is a lot longer in the Japanese cut, for instance. So as a documentary slash shockumentary, this has got to be one of the better ones. This is the ones that you could watch a lot of. Yes, it isn't flinching, but you do think to yourself, this is done well. It's actually done with less sensationalism as all of the other ones do. The ones like Shock in Africa, um, Mondo Carne, they really are just done there to just see how much shocking footage they can show you and uh, some of it is shocking some of it it's very shocking in this movie but it's shocking in the way that um is done in the right way next up is a narrow release that i thought when i heard about this coming over here i thought there is no way on earth they are going to show the full version of this on this disc and of course it is uh, this movie is a mess I've got to say it's not one of the best movies you would see it had a lot of potential there was a lot of problems with the production if you ever get this movie do check out the makings of because the makings on here making ofs on here are absolutely brilliant they tell you about everything that went into this movie how it was sort of such a disaster from beginning to end and when you watch the movie you will understand that it is a complete and utter hash of a movie even though it's packed with uh, megastars and it had the potential to be one of the um the best sort of roman movie films but it's got a lot and i mean a lot of explicit material in it and it is caligula now i had i had known it uh, it was available uncut in america and i also knew when it was out in the uk it did have um a lot of cuts in it and i'm gonna i'm guessing i'm a bit foggy on some of the details but i think it was about 30 minutes was cut out of it and you did hear about other versions that had like the say the the, the movie was 90 minutes long you had a heard of 100 minutes long 110 minutes long so anyway when this was released it was released fully uncut and i mean fully uncut and i i honestly thought there is no way on earth that this is going to pass the senses because as well as all the explicit stuff in there there's some quite nasty gruesome stuff in it as well that you think that that's things that just don't fly with the um with the senses and that it's all in there and even though this the actually the make the, the story behind this movie is much more interesting than the story but the fact that this came across was one of the first ones when i thought you're joking me this is not going to be released fully uncut but here you are fully uncut i think it's still available obviously this is the window box version that was released uh, way back when and it's got a really good uh, print on it as well but if you're expecting a good movie you will not get a good movie but if you want a sensationalistic 
ex exploitative movie, this is probably top of the list. So Caligula was part directed by the Italian director Tinto Brass. Now, there's another movie of his that everyone hears about, and when you were talking about movies that would never be released and video nasties and all this type of thing, even though this wasn't a video nasty, but I knew it was never, I don't think it was ever released in uh, the UK at all. This was one of the ones that didn't even get here. And it is Salon Kitty. Now this is a, that, as that was kind of, uh, Caligula was kind of a bit, some of the, the scenes were directed by Tinto Brass. You can tell the Tinto Brass stuff. Um, this movie is a, is a Tinto Brass movie. Now, he did sort of descend into sort of making rubbish movies, but this is one of the ones where he was making half decent movies. And uh, this actually, I think he was making before Caligula, but Caligula took about six years to come out, which was another story. Um, so this one here, I did hear about it and uh, never thought it would ever come out. Of course it came out and it's got an um, extended director's cut, can you believe? But this movie is pretty graphic. And there's a lot of there's a lot of scenes in here. If you ever seen the movie or you know about the whole fact of it's to do with uh, Nazis and Nazi experiments and what they do to people, uh, in quite quite graphic details, and um, you would be stunned to know that this was ever going to get released uh, fully uncut because a lot of things like torture don't sit well with the senses, and that's why this movie was just forbidden for a long time. But here it is, and it's released by Arjun Films. No, me neither. And I'll read you a little bit of the blurb. From Tinto Brass, the director of Caligula, comes his own extended director's cut of Salon Kitty, with 21 minutes previously cut, now restored, completely uncensored and presented for the first time in HD. This fully restored widescreen version finally allows the film's extreme, most hardcore content to be seen as originally intended by its director. Yeah. Can you believe it? Also, it says that um, it's got showcasing the stunning sets of Oscar winner Ken Adams for Kubrick's Barry Lyndon and designer of most of James Bond films. So can you believe that that's, those people were involved with this? It just shows you what type of movies did come out in the 70s and what they were, um, you know, how like mainstream people would be involved with them. Where these days, if you made a film like this, the the big wigs would never uh, touch it with a barge pole. So that's Salon Kitty. So speaking of fair uh, controversial movies, the next up is Salo or 120 Days of Sodom. Yeah, this movie, right, this movie isn't for everybody's tastes at all, pun intended. And it does feature some, some really hard to watch stuff. Now, why have I got it? I do like the director of this, who's called Pier Paolo Pasolini. Now he did get murdered just either just as this movie was completed. I don't know if he saw the proper version of this movie or he got uh, murdered just after it. He got actually beaten to death in a, a car park and there's, there's footage of his, uh, his body after he got beaten to death and he did get beaten to death. And I think he got beaten to death by a jealous lover, I believe. Um, there's, there's some, there's, the story behind him is very fascinating. And I have got some of his other, other films up there and I do think they're really good. This movie is like a step ahead of what everything was coming at that point. I mean, it's from 1975, so these movies don't really, in 1975, this type of thing wasn't even a thing. Uh, it is fully uncut. I never ever, because at one time you had a list of movies that if you brought them into the country, you would be prosecuted by the, um, by the law. And this was number two on the list. Number one was Cannibal Holocaust. And to have this come out quite early on, I think this was about 2010 this came out, uh, fully uncut, was unreal actually. Now the, the BFI have done a spectacular version on this movie. Now this is a movie that I don't watch very often, but when I do watch it, what I do like about it is, is again, is the fact of this gang in it that are really absolutely horrendous. And they sort of, um, it's all to do with uh, Italian politics and stuff like that. So there's a, there is a there is a story behind it, but it's very unflinching and it's certainly not for everybody. So yeah, so, but this was a stunner when this was released uncut. And you, you can, I mean, I got this from CEX. Can you imagine thinking to yourself when you heard about this movie, oh, I'll just go into CEX one day and get a Fatana. Wow, but this is a great version if you want. It's got a lot of stuff to do with the director and behind the scenes, so the actual backstory of this movie is quite fascinating as well. So that's Sallow. 
So lastly, are two movies that I remember hearing about. I remember hearing a lot about. And it was one of those ones where, hey, guess what's coming out? And you will never, ever get a chance to see it. I don't think these movies are that explicit. But what I do think is the actual subject content in it is quite next level. So the last two movies I'm going to talk about today are Necromantic and Necromantic 2. Now, I can't believe that Arrow have put a really good special edition out with everything, you know, in in it. You know, all these fancy books and postcards. I mean, the, the stunning sets. Um, the subject matter is, yeah, it's exactly what it's what it says. Um, I do think Necromantic is all right. It's not that. It's not that great. It seems a bit more like a student movie, if I'm honest. Um, I don't really think it's only about an hour long. And it's it's average to say the least. The packaging here is absolutely beautiful, and I do think that um, Arrow have knocked it out of the park with it. It's the best release it's ever going to be. It's not the best film at all. Now, Net Romantic Two, on the other hand, is a much better movie. It's, I'm saying better movie. Yes, it's exactly the same thing as as this movie. It's all about the the same subject matter. Uh, but I've got to admit, the ending of this movie is unreal. Uh, it's one of it's not one of my favourite endings, but it's one of the most extreme endings I've seen to a movie. And also, as I've mentioned on a few uh, videos, the last line in this movie has got to be one of the best ever last, last lines in any movie that I've ever seen. And I was like, wow, that's unreal. So that's 10 or so movies that I can't believe ever got released fully uncut in the UK because, like I say, back in the day, these movies would have been movies that the police would have come into your house and lifted you for for actually owning them and you, you couldn't own them uh, legally in britain and here they are you can go down to the shops and you can buy them from cx hmv nobody bats an eyelid so how times have changed so thanks for watching you take care and i will see you on the next video cheers